In this video, we're going to develop the, the uh, formula for calculating the b sub k terms, which are the coefficients associated with the sine terms in our Fourier series expansion. To do this, we're going to take advantage of a couple of integrations. First of all, the integral from 0 to t of the cosine of k omega naught t times the sine of n omega naught t dt, that equals 0. And the integral from 0 to t of the sine of k omega naught t times the sine of n omega naught t dt equals 0 except when n equals k. And under those circumstances, it does not equal 0. We'll see what it equals here in just a second. But it's important that the product of sine times the sine, when k equals n, in other words, we're going to get sine of, o of k omega naught t times the sine of k omega naught t, that's the sine squared of k omega naught t, that integral does not equal 0. We'll be using that. So this then gives us some hint as to what we can do to isolate this b sub n term. We're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the sine of k omega naught t. And then we're going to integrate. So first of all, distributing this to both sides of the equation, we get a f of t is multiplied by that. The a sub v is multiplied by that. This term here is multiplied by the sine of k omega naught t. We bring it inside the summation because since it's a function of k naught n, it's a, effectively a constant for any value of n in here. And similarly, we bring this sine of k omega naught t times the sine of n omega naught t. We've multiplied both sides by that. We now integrate both sides of the equation over the period the period of our periodic function f of t. On the right hand side we've got the constant times the sine. This is the sine of an in, where the frequency or the the, um, the argument of the sine is an integer multiple of the fundamental frequency and as we've seen over and over again this makes no contribution to the integration. That goes to z the integral of that is zero. Similarly, as we pointed out up here, the cosine of k omega naught t times the sine of omega naught t, when you integrate this over the period, it also has no contribution, or that integral equals zero. Finally, we have the sine of k omega naught t times the sine of n omega naught t. That integral is zero any time n, any time um, n does not equal k, but when n equals k, we end up with the sine squared of k omega naught t. When n equals k, we have the sine of k omega naught t times the sine of k, k omega naught t. That's equal to the sine squared of k omega naught t. We then use a trig identity to the sine of k omega naught t times the sine of n omega naught t equals one half of negative the cosine of two k omega naught t plus one for k equaling n. So when k equals n, we've got this term here. This term, using that identity, expands to this. So this integral here, this last term integral, then becomes the integral from zero to t b sub k, n equals k, so b sub k times 1 half times negative cosine of 2 k omega naught t plus 1. And that whole thing is our integrand. Now as we know, we're integrating over a multiple number, an integer multiple of periods, and so this cosine term, when we integrate it, gives us 0. On the other hand, this 1 term, when we integrate that, we get t evaluated the upper limit of capital T minus the lower limit of zero, this right-hand integral becomes b sub k t over two. We solve for b sub k by multiplying both sides of this equation by two and dividing by t, and we end up with the formula for the b sub k's, which is two over t times the integral of our function 
multiplied by the sine of k omega naught t dt.